Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Today we're gonna to be talking about bolt carrier groups for the LR-308. And this is an Odin Works bolt carrier group for the LR-308. And we're gonna talk about the two styles of bolt on the bolt carriers. Um, there's two versions. There's a standard dimension, and then there's what's called a high pressure for the LR-308. Now, you notice I'm calling this an LR-308 like three or four times in about 30 seconds, and there's a reason for that. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Despite what these manufacturers like to call this stuff. Okay, so first thing we should probably talk about is these two bolt carry groups are identical. Um, one's Odin Works, the other one is Wilson Combat. And every single cut, every machining mark, everything is the same. So Wilson Combat and Odin Works are sourcing their bolt carry groups from the same manufacturer as far as I can tell. Even to the point where you look at this screw the rear screw on the, the gas key here, you can see that it's a little boogered up compared to the front screw. And the same thing on this one. The rear screw is a little bit boogered up as far as where the hex fit inside, cap screws. I mean, they're, they're just identical. Now, when I bought the Wilson Combat Bolt Carrier Group, they did not advertise it as a high-pressure bolt. Uh, some of their description kind of led me to believe that it might be, but they did not come right out and say it. Whereas on the Odin Works, in the previous clip I just showed on their packaging, it says high pressure. But they are both the same. So what's, what started this video here was me wanting to buy some spare parts for these bolt carrier groups. And um, that's when we started running into a little bit of trouble. Okay, so after I got the Wilson Combat BCG, the nitrided model, um, I figured out that it, it was, in fact, a high-pressure uh, bolt design. And um, so what's the difference between a high-pressure and your standard dimension uh, DPMS pattern bolt? On your high-pressure, the pinhole size for the firing pin has been reduced down to 0.0. Seven zero. So they made the firing pin hole smaller, and then they also made the, the pin smaller itself, and that comes in at 0 .067. And I'm getting ready to show you all this with a caliper, but I thought we'd talk about the dimensions first. So high pressure, the pin hole is 0 .070, and the pin is 0 .067. On a standard um, DPS dimension, the pinhole is 0 0.078, and the pin is 0 0.075, so uh, quite a bit bigger. So now we get into the part where things got a little screwed up with, uh, with Wilson Combat because of their descriptions. Okay, so on the Wilson Combat website, like I said, I was looking for a spare firing pin. And this is what I ordered. Now, before I ordered this, I sent an email to Wilson Combat. And I said, does your firing pin fit the BCG that I also purchased from you? Because in your description, there was the mention of standard dimension. And I said, but I can't see you guys selling a firing pin that doesn't fit your BCG. So anyway, I got a response back the next day, and the guy had kind of an odd name. I, his name was, I'm not familiar with, that I've ever heard in my entire life of 66 years of living. Very odd name. But he came back and said, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this uh, TRAR10FP will fit the nitride BCG. Well, the pin shows up. And back here it says standard dimension firing pin is guaranteed to never break blah, blah, blah of any DPMS pattern. Well, this is a DPMS pattern bolt carrier group, so I still thought, well, 
Even though they're saying standard and this is high pressure, maybe it'll fit. It did not fit. So I got back with Wilson Combat and I said, hey, uh, you know, before I purchased this firing pin, which is the only ones you guys sell separately, so I assumed that it should fit, but because of your description, uh, I, I sent an email and I was told that it would fit. Well, it doesn't. So the second email I sent to them, they, they sent me the correct firing pin. And now we'll, we'll take some measurements and I'll show you what the differences are between a standard dimension LR-308 DPMS pattern firing pin versus the high pressure. Okay, so when I got back to them after the purchase and after the first email and after the second email and I got the correct pin from them, this is how it showed up. It just showed up in a bag. It was not packaged like this one. And they just sent it in a pouch. So I got to looking at this a little bit closer and I noticed there's oil, uh, leftover oil on the, the firing pin. Now this pin is not used. It's brand new. There's no signs that it has ever been used. There's no... uh hammer marks on the back of the, the firing pin. There's, there's no wear at all on it. It is a brand new pin, but I believe that it was part of a complete bolt carrier group that they had. And just for them to get me the correct firing pin for this, this BCG, they, they took a BCG apart and pulled the pin out of it and sent it to me. So I think that's how they got me the correct pin. So we'll get this out of the bag and I'll show you the leftover oil and we'll wipe it down. Like I said, I... I just took it out of the bag initially and looked at it. It has not been installed in any of my BCGs. So this oil that's on here uh, came from them. Okay, so like I said, brand new from them. This is the correct high pressure pin. And you can see leftover oil on it. Now that's not from packaging oil. That's from sitting in a, in a bolt carrier group. When I got this one out of the uh, package, there was no oil on it. It was pristine. So, I mean, I give Wilson credit, Wilson Combat credit for getting me the correct pin, even if they had to take a, uh, a BCG apart to, to get it to me. Okay, so the standard dimension, uh, you'll notice that on the back where the, uh, the hammer hits the, the firing pin, it has a groove in it, and this high pressure doesn't. Now, I don't know if that's a thing, but that's one of the differences here. And on the standard dimension, the low pressure version, you can see that this firing pin area is actually a smaller diameter, but the firing pin is gonna be fatter here. And on the high pressure firing pin, this is, been beefed up in this area here and the tip is smaller so besides the groove on the back and the dimension from here forward are the two things that are different the rest of the firing pins as far as I could tell making all my measurements the rest of it is pretty much identical so that's your two basic differences now I'll, I'll actually show you the difference in uh, the tip diameters between the high pressure and the standard dimension Okay, so this is the correct high pressure firing pin for this high pressure bolt. And you can see that the tip of the firing pin goes right in there. So no issues. And this is a standard dimension DPMS. You can see that it's won't fit in the hole. So that's the primary difference between a high pressure firing pin and a standard dimension uh, DPMS firing pins. And like I was saying earlier at the video, um, Wilson Combat does not do a very good job of letting you know what you're actually getting when you order this nitrite bolt carrier group. Um, I think they gave enough hints on the firing pin, but you would think because they only offer the one firing pin on their online site that you, know, you might think that it's going to fit this and it doesn't. So I think Wilson Combat maybe needs to clean up their descriptions a little bit, their specifications, and let people know right up front 
what's going to fit what and what's not going to fit what without having me to go through and find out the hard way. Okay, so as I was saying at the beginning of the video, the, what prompted all this was descriptions, specifications, nomenclatures, things not being in total agreement. I think a lot of this can be solved is if they just got away from calling this stuff AR-10, which it is not. If it's a DPMS pattern rifle, it is not AR-10. And here's their extractor upgrade kit, which I bought. I just decided I'd get a spare extractor too. And you can see that they're calling it the EXT and they put 308 in a part number and then they tell you exactly what this is for. And then over here, like I was showing earlier, this is AR-10 in their part number, but then they come down here in 308 and then they, when they don't tell you up front on their online site, you don't really find out until you get the packaging that it's um, standard dimension and it just goes on and on like this to where there's just a lot of conflicting information to get the uh, the potential buyer a little bit confused. And um, Wilson Combat does not sell the uh, separate rings for their bolt carrier groups. They only sell the one piece McFarland style, which I do not like. So I went and got, I went to Sprinco and bought some extra gas rings, and uh, we got some extra ejectors and some. O-rings. Um, this comes with both springs, the big spring and the small spring, which we're going to get to in the next clip here. I'm going to show you something to watch out for um, when you take these apart for cleaning. So we'll get the bolt out of the bolt carrier and I'll show you what can happen. Okay, so something to kind of watch out for on most of these uh, large caliber bolts is what they've done is they've they've put four pieces onto the extractor. Uh, most of them are coming with two O-rings, a large spring, and a smaller inner spring. And when I first got this rifle, um, I took this uh, BCG apart from Wilson Comblat just to clean it up and oil it and make sure everything was fine before I fired the rifle. And this inner spring, and all I had to do was was turn this like upside down and that inner spring would fall out. Now, since I fired the rifle, it doesn't fall out anymore. So it's probably got itself squished in there, but brand new that that smaller spring would fall out. So I, I just wanted to mention that when you take your extractor apart for cleaning or maintenance, that you might lose that, uh, that inner spring. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna say is, uh, I, I kind of alluded to it during the whole video, but I wish these companies would A, stop calling stuff AR-10 that is not AR-10, if it's a DPMS pattern, let's let's call it LR-308. That's what I suggest. Don't even call it AR-308 because AR stands for Armalite Rifle and calling a DPMS pattern an AR-308 is not correct either, in my opinion. So anyway, I wish the industry would kind of get things standardized. And if you can't standardize all the parts, I, I kind of understand that, that improvements and things change and they come along. But at least let's get what we call the stuff correct and let's get the descriptions correct and the specifications that people need to make an informed uh, decision on, on what to purchase and what they might actually have. Okay, well, anyway, I hope this is helpful uh, for those of you that are just getting into the, the large caliber uh, LR-308 platform. Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.